On my last video, I left you off that I lost my dog uh, six years to cancer and internal bleeding. Um, so. I took half a milligram of Ativan um, last Wednesday at 7.40 p.m., I want to say. And since then, I haven't had any. And now it is... Monday, probably 1 o'clock, um, and prior to taking that out of van, I had not taken, um, um, I made it six days, six days, and I want to say like 18 hours without it, so I was home stretched for a week. This week, compared to last week, with the withdrawal, um, I've noticed my headaches are worse, I'm shaky more, I'm sweating all the time. Not only do I live in Arizona in the desert, but let me tell you, I'm sweating all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter what the AC's on, I'm sweating. Um, the room would not stop spinning yesterday. I literally had to lay down and just sleep for a good four hours for it to stop spinning. Um, But in all reality, well, before I, t I tell you my theory, um, I've been constipated. I eat a whole bunch and then I don't want to eat. And then I eat a whole bunch and then I don't want to eat. Uh, I literally have four dogs and I refuse to get, in it, to get rid of any of my dogs. Um, my spouse is my fiancé. He is very, very supportive of this. He understands why I want to quit out of Anne. And we did, like, a trial and error thing. Um, so for two months, I journaled what it was like if I was on three milligrams of Ativan, uh, three half milligrams, so half a milligram three times a day, versus if I was on half a milligram once a day. So I went from, to backtrack here a little bit, I went from, uh, when I took the half milligram out of deer in the day, I did that for two weeks, and then the next two weeks... I cut my one milligram tablet in half, and then I cut one of those halves into a half. So I was taking three quarters of a milligram in the morning and three quarters at night. Two weeks. And then the next week, I did half a milligram in the morning, three quarters at night. And then the two weeks later, I did a quarter of a milligram in the morning, three quarters at night. And then the next two weeks, I did a quarter of a milligram in the morning, half a milligram at night. Then the next two weeks... I did a quarter of a milligram in the morning, a quarter of a milligram at night. Well, I wasn't sleeping. So I took my quarter of a milligram in the morning away within a week. And I had pretty bad withdrawal. And I, as soon as I got to 7 o'clock and I got my half milligram, I could sleep like a baby. I was fine. So for about a month, I did a half a milligram at night. And I, would, and I would wait. I would push myself. Um, instead of every 24 hours, I would go 25 hours, 26 hours, 27 hours, 30 hours, 32. I started pushing it by the hour. First, I started pushing it by the minute, and then I started pushing it by the hour. Now, it took me a month to stay on this half a milligram, but I was no longer doing it at 7 and 7. I was doing it by the hours. And I told myself, you have to at least make it 24 hours, and then you can take your half tablet. The busier I stayed, the less I needed it. And the funny part is, is the less I had the Ativan, the less I seized. The more Ativan I had, the more I seized. Now, there are doctors out the ass that will argue with you. That's not possible. It can't do that. Da 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 da, -da. Well, let me tell you, I'm allergic to weed. And I do not know very many people, I know one actually off the top of my head, my cousin, I do not know a lot of people who are allergic to weed. Well, just about anything is possible with my body. Let me tell you, just about freaking anything is possible with my body. For someone to say, that's not possible, it can't do it, no. Anything is possible, any medication, at any time. You are not guaranteed to not have the same reaction or the same symptoms that the next person has. Just because 
their age and your body weight and the same race or, or same background or whatever does not mean you're going to have this exact same things. Ativan worked for me for about a year and a half, and then it stopped. It took me a year and a half to, de to develop the tolerance to 3 milligrams a day. So 1 milligram 3 times a day. It took me a year and a half to develop that tolerance. And once I did, it was hell. Not only was I upset, I was stressed, I was emotional. Um, I've lost so much weight, I can't even tell you. I am, I am 88 pounds on a good day. Um, Ativan made me a zombie. I did not want to eat. I don't, and, and still to this day, I still, like I said, appetite, no appetite. I don't laugh for anything. Um, I lost my, my, my light. I lost my, my ability to laugh, to find things funny. Everything is just monotone. People say a joke and I'm just, okay. And you don't find that funny? Not anymore. It literally stripped away my personality. It stripped away me as a person, and I didn't agree with it. And it took me a lot to get my mind right and get my headset right that this medication is not for me. This drug is not for me. And I don't bash anybody who takes it. I, If it works for you, great. I'm glad. I'm glad you found something that works. Because it was very hard to find something that does work and that can keep you happy at the same time. So... If it works for you, awesome. But I do recommend, I strongly recommend that before you take Ativan or any medication for that matter, do your research and really ask yourself, is this going to be a short-term or a long-term thing? And what am I going to have to sacrifice when I do decide to quit this medication? Now, make sure you have a good support system. Um, my, like I said, my fiancé is... Outstanding. He's just, he's amazing. And the, the small group of friends I do have, they understand and they know she's an Ativan withdrawal. She's upset or, or she doesn't feel good. She's an Ativan withdrawal. What can I do? The simplest things people can do, the simplest things for you that will make a huge difference. Um, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what's wrong? I'm an Ativan withdrawal. What can I do? Can you just take me to the grocery store? I just need to go to the store to go shopping, and I don't want to go alone. Can you go with me? And they went. Uh, that's my mother-in-law, and she went with me. Like, it was no big deal. It took no time for her to do that. It wasn't an inconvenience, and I thought it was a huge inconvenience for me to ask her. I thought it was going to invade her life or her time, and it wasn't. There are people out there that are willing to help you to get you in the right state of mind to help you get happy, to help you to be who you want to be. And I think that's one of the most important things is I set my goal and I set my mind that in a year I'm going to stand up and say, I have not had Ativan in a year and I am doing great. And that is a goal I set for myself and I am determined to get to that goal. Um, I think the biggest part of Ativan withdrawal is mind over matter. No matter how many withdrawals you have, no matter how long it lasts, no matter how bad you're sweating, no matter how nauseous you feel, no matter how bad your head hurts, no matter how high your blood pressure gets or your heart rate gets, um, don't give up. If you have to take one to calm your blood pressure down and calm your heart rate down, fine, take one and then tell yourself, look, we're going to do this differently next time. I'm going to take a half milligram for a week. And then I'm going to take a quarter of a milligram for two weeks. Or I'm going to take a half milligram for two weeks. And I'm going to take a quarter of a milligram for, you know, two weeks. If you quit cold turkey, go back and start tapering slowly. If you taper too quick, go back to a reasonable amount, which would be a half milligram. Or, or if you're on three milligrams and you want to go to two, do that. Go back and start over. It's never too late to start over with tapering. Just tell yourself, I'm going to do it differently so I don't get those withdrawals as bad as I did. Um, withdrawal has been bad, but like I said, it's mind over matter. Meditation has helped me tremendously. Not just with Ativan withdrawal, but with brain surgery, with um, 
my back surgery, you know, the death of my family's meditation has made a huge difference. So I would highly recommend a homeopathic version, whether it's oils or meditation or exercise or playing video games or whatever your thing is, find your thing. And if it works for you, don't let anybody tell you differently. If it's something that you can do and you're not harming yourself, great. Whatever it may be. Um, like I said, I have four dogs and <clears throat> uh, I just recently adopted a new dog from the shelter. They were overpopulated uh, and they were letting dogs go for $20. So we adopted a dog and he is a huge help. All of my dogs help me in some way or another. And you don't have to have dogs. You can have cats, you can have fish, you can have gerbils, you can have whatever your thing is, find it. You don't like animals? Fine. Books. You don't like books? Fine. Video games. Whatever your thing is to help you calm you down and bring you back to a peace of mind, that's where you want to be. So, I will continue to video my story. Um, I'm sure this won't get seen a whole bunch. But for those of you that do see it, if you have questions or if you have tips of advice, that's great. Um, I know a lot of people will start to have questions about me being allergic to weed. I can tell you right now, I've tried uh, this different strand or that different strand. It didn't matter whether it was the HCG or the different things that they would extract or the oils or the edibles. It didn't matter what I had. I had the exact same reaction. It was an anaphylactic reaction. Every I never had weed before brain surgery. And after brain surgery was when they tried it for my appetite. And it didn't matter how I tried it. I was the same anaphylactic reaction. So whatever they did during brain surgery, it pissed the brain off enough to where it doesn't want weed ever in its life. I'm okay with that. I have nothing against it. I don't drink alcohol. Um, I have been entirely away from alcohol since... Uh, April of 2014, so prior to brain surgery, I stopped drinking because I had migraines. The migraines was the valley fever. And they told me when I woke up, if you drink, you may very well have more seizures. That scared the enough out of me that I don't have to drink alcohol. I don't drink wine either. I won't. I don't use wine to cook. That's it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I've stood my ground on that. You literally have to put yourself down and stand your ground and tell Ativan or Xanax or Value or whatever you're fighting, no. This is my life, and I'm taking it back. So, I'll probably be doing this for a good year. Like I said, if you guys have questions or comments, or you have any advice on helping techniques with, you know, withdrawal, feel free. Um, I've never done YouTube videos. I just started doing them because I figured if I could help at least one person, then I'm doing something right. Or if one person feels like, they know that other people are out there like me, then maybe it helps them. I watched a girl's video. Um, she came back from Iraq, and she had PTSD, and she was in Advan withdrawal. And I, I don't remember your name. I don't remember your screen name right now. But huge shout-out to you because you're the one who got me going uh, to put my foot down and say no. So I definitely look up to you, and thank you for your service overseas. I appreciate it. Alright guys, see you later. I gotta finish all my laundry. <laughs>